they didn't want to do it themselves. They wanted oh, me. my father-in-law's pants. <laughs> If it's your first time here, please. You're welcome, honey. Thank you for clicking. And well, if you're here, don't forget to click that subscribe button and join the family. If you're returning to be honey, thank you so much for doing this for me. And uh, in today's video, I think based on the title, you probably know what this video is about. Yes, it is about my family. Yes, I'm inviting you again in my private life. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this week has been kind of hectic uh, because of what happened to my father or whatever of the video. You can let me know in the comment section about it feels right and I don't know how I can regulate. Um, you know, the position where I'm seated right now is at my dining table. I think if you've watched the video I did put up about my house tour, you probably know this position. This is the story. My father-in-law is in hospital. Yeah. He, his bones broke. He had an accident. He fell. He tripped and uh, fell at home when he, while he was get, getting in the house. Uh, the door to my mother-in-law's house it has like a stood. I think my father-in-law missed it, so he fell. He fell. Luckily, he didn't fell on his head set, but then unfortunately, he broke his um, hip bone. The hip bone broke. Like um, this is the third time he broke both sides before now one leg where he broke is the second time on that part so it's really complicated right now the doctors are still deciding on what to do today is day three and uh, the doctors are still deciding on what to do with it because of old age my father-in-law is um over 80 so there's old age also playing part here so he's in pain Yesterday right now. I went to the hospital and um, I can actually see that he's in pain. And uh, it pains me to know that there's nothing done yet to rectify the problem. They are just giving him some medicine, some tablets, which I think is still not used because you can actually see that he has a broken joint, but he's still in the ward. Nothing has been done and the doctors are still deciding he's not on the medication that is so pain i mean maybe it's just painkillers i don't know that he has to take when it's time to sleep but he hardly slept uh, for the past two nights because he's complaining that it's painful his leg is painful and it hurts me the most so um, the day it happened i was in class and uh, that was my after work hustle and i was cool and uh, just had to rush and leave everything i was doing and when I got there, the ambulance has already, had already arrived and he was already in the ambulance. So when I arrived there, I just wanted to know where the ambulance was taking him. As you know, my mother-in-law is also old now. So to handle this, like running around in the hospital, booking, registering, registering my father-in-law, it can be a big job for her because she's old as well. So she's not fast enough. It's also hard for her to walk. So um, I had to follow. Although I'm a foreigner and my Chinese is not that great, but I just find my way, you know, around it and, uh, you know, to, to get along with the situation and see that things are done. My husband has two other brothers and they all live far away from Weihai. So yeah, luckily they had to flew in the next day. But for that particular day, it was already late. It was around seven when this happened and um so they couldn't find flights or whatever they couldn't be on time anyway so i was the only one there to stand in yeah i did what i had to do so i was just with my father-in-law so the first thing they did was to register him and then take him to the x-ray room they wheeled him to the um, x-ray room and my mother-in-law had tyler because we had nobody to look after tyler so my mother-in-law had Tyler and they were left on their first floor and this was going to happen on the third floor. So I had to follow and get up, go along with my father-in-law and the doctors, you know. So when we got there, he was still wearing his pants. So this is something that I couldn't understand because when the doctor, the doctor told me to go in and uh, 
take off my father-in-law's pants i found it really really hard actually I, I couldn't honestly i couldn't i don't know you guys what would you do if you're in my position so i told the doctor that yes he's my dad but he's my father-in-law i please i can't just do it and the doctor surprisingly the doctor is a male so i don't know why the doctor was asking me i don't know if there are some reasons why they they didn't want to do it themselves they wanted me the family member to take off my father-in-law's pants which i i couldn't i failed i said no i i can't i just told the doctor i can't please do what you have to do i can't please take off the pants i can't he's my father-in-law i can't take his pants off and the doctor uh, luckily the doctor didn't argue with me he quickly got it so i was asked to leave the room because it's in the x-ray so they closed the doors and uh, as you can see so i was able to just take some photos of him on the on the bed in the x-ray room and um after a couple of minutes they wheeled him out and then we went downstairs uh to the first floor again you know at the hospital because here in china hospitals are you know some things a lot of things happen on different floors luckily there are elevators but i think it's a whole lot of a job because when we arrived at mission in the emergency area it was already nice so we didn't go to the outpatient we went to the emergency right and also it's an emergency he came with an ambulance so we were left on the first floor and we did all the registering the payments at mission on the first floor so we paid for x-rays we had to be wheeled up on the uh, to the third floor and then uh, after the x-ray we had to co come down again to the first floor and then we were asked to decide he has to be admitted in a hospital so we say yes it's okay so then they had to fill in the paperwork for um admission that means he was going to be admitted and sent to the ward that was the next process and all this by the way when you come through the outpatient i mean the emergency it's kind of fast i think as compared to if it was daytime and you go through the uh, outpatient area i think that part is usually uh, packed and uh, so many people and it will take hours and hours to get everything done and finally get to the ward so after that was done we were wheeled again after we filled fill the forms and everything and um they need cash up front you can't use the medical aid fortunately my parents-in-law they all have the medical aid and if you live in china or if you have lived in china you probably know that using cash is quite expensive so buying insurance it helps in terms in terms of this because bills can be really huge if you are paying cash in china so but then they would ask you to pay cash up front and um, the insurance will reimburse the money luckily you don't have to fight with the insurance especially these old people or the chinese people the insurance they don't have to fight um soon after you are you are released from the hospital the insurance will automatically pay back what you paid the hospital will help you fill in and um submit your insurance so um, but the first thing on the very first day they would like you to pay upfront so we did pay upfront cash up after front. that we had to go on the seventh to the seventh floor that was the word he was given um normally in chinese hospitals are they don't separate words like the males or and the females males and female together in the word so it's something that i failed to understand because i thought like in my country we have male words and we have female words separated right but in china no they're not separated except for children and so you'll be just in the same ward with them with male you know like that so we were sent to the seventh floor and uh, the moment the elevator doors open jeez it was just this heavy cigarette smell that greeted us all the way to the ward even in the ward they are smelly so i don't understand that even some patients smoke in the ward so what i don't understand so we were put in this ward with three other people already and i was really uncomfortable and i was just worried for my father-in-law i don't know how he was gonna sleep all night and my mother-in-law had to stay in the hospital i was with tyler so we left to the hospital to check up with him the next day so the siblings were on their way the next day so they come um we definitely needed them there to come and uh, i proposed that my father-in-law be in a separate room of course they the children are also had the same mindset as I because 
I think with other people it's just it's just so hard you know because you have to have somebody to stay with him in the hospital sleep overnight with him can help wherever anything is needed you know so fortunately the brother the brothers arrived earlier and yesterday and um yeah they had to handle that and uh, my father-in-law was moved to another separate ward that's only one person no sharing just a private um a private uh, ward and uh, it happens like i say it's the third time now my father you know being in hospital for the same reasons broken bones joint bones or the hip bones so it's the third time so and um the fortunate thing is the word he was given that is the the, the private one it's passed it two times he stayed in the same word and um, now we are back in the same word again and um, we, we we like it when it's like that so we can just go anytime after work i will go there and stay there until late and come home at least it will be just our family in there so yeah that's it y'all so pray for my father-in-law i hope you get better and i hope the host the doctors will find a solution to this um problem and if there are doctors here what normally happens in a situation like that like he's over 80 and uh maybe his bones are weak and it's the second time so that's why the doctors are saying they have to really find a solution to that because uh it's not easy now because of old age and uh his bones are kind of weak so i don't know what they're gonna do maybe they're gonna put a metal or what i don't understand we're just praying for a miracle that he'd be able to walk again and um not anything else we just we just believing for a, <clears throat> for a miracle that they can wake out on that part of the body and uh, he'll be able to walk again he must walk again okay so we're just speaking life and believing for the best okay so that's it y'all and also while lisa was following the ambulance i did went through a red traffic light so right now i'm just also praying that i don't get a ticket and uh, in china because of the point system i'm probably looking at losing six points for going through a red traffic light and also pay a fine i i really don't know i'm just praying and believing that the cameras didn't get me yeah it sort of happens maybe it's just a miracle the cameras didn't get me yeah i will give you an update of um, how it went and um yeah every day i'll give you daily updates on that just pray for our family because this is a trying time it is a sad time really so yeah i will see you in the next vlog thank you guys for watching to this end if you watched all the way to this end you are the realest okay thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video y'all thank you if you haven't subscribed by this time you should just click subscribe and also hit that first thumbs up y'all they'll do good for me thank you so much goodbye